Hello everyone, welcome to my chem corner. So today we are going to do lecture 2 from solid state, chapter 1 from class 12 or second PUC. So in this video we are going to cover crystal lattice and unit cell basic definitions. Then we will move in to see the how, how many types of unit cells are, are there. So basically the classification of unit cells. Then some parameters with respect to unit cells, basically talking about their edge length, talking about their bond angle and etc. Then we will move into the seven types of unit cells in the crystal. We will look into its individual angle and individual edge length and see what differences they have in the seven primitive unit cells. And then we will move into calculating number of atoms that a unit cell actually has. So it could be different for different types of unit cells. So we will go in detail and calculate for each. And in the end of the video, we will be solving some problems on how to calculate the formula for a particular compound, depending on what type of a unit cell we take. So before we move into the video, if you're new to this channel, please don't forget to subscribe and follow uh, updates. So here, the very first thing that we will look into is crystal lattice and unit cells, basically talking about the basic definitions of uh, lattice points, about crystal lattice and unit cell. So first, before we move into the definition, we need to know what these terminologies are when you look at a diagram. So say I have a crystal here and I have cubes connected to each other. So basically, I have four cubes on top connect interconnected and four cubes below both of these are connected to each other. Now, each point in this cube is this the atom or the sphere. So here, if you're considering uh, an atom or a sphere, which is trying to connect each of these uh, uh, points and trying to form a cube is nothing but your lattice point. And each cube is called as a unit cell. So out of an entire crystal, one particular cube is what you call as a unit cell and the individual spheres are called as lattice points. Now let's look at the definition of each of this. Lattice points are points that indicate relative points, positions of constituent particles in a crystal. So it's talking about the position of a particular particle in a crystal and that's called as a lattice point. Now talking about a crystal lattice or a space lattice, now, the definition of this means it is a three-dimensional arrangement of all these spheres. Basically talking about how these are arranged in a three-dimensional position and trying to show a shape. That is nothing but your crystal lattice. And the last definition is the smallest repeating unit of a crystal, which when repeated in three dimension gives a crystal lattice that is called as a unit cell. So each of this cube, as it keeps repeating to form a, a crystal, that particular smallest unit is called as a unit cell. So these are the three different uh, points that you will come across every now and then when we're going to learn any topic in this chapter. We will come across the, the term like lattice point. You will come across term like crystal lattice. You will come across a term like unit cell. So you should know what these terms actually mean. So lattice point is the point which indicates the position of the particle. Crystal lattice is when we have this lattice point in a three-dimensional arrangement, then that's going to be called as a crystal lattice. And when each of these unit is going to repeat, creating an entire crystal, the repeating unit is called as a unit cell. So now let's move on to classification of unit cell. So here, when you look at a normal unit cell, which is a, basically a simple cube, such kind of a unit cell is called as a primitive unit cell. The constituent particles present at the corners of the unit cell or the corners of the cube is called as a primitive unit cell or it, you can just call it as a simple cube. Now the next one is centered unit cell. So say if, if we are sitting in a room, you're sitting in a room right now listening to this video, the room itself is considered to be a cube, right? So you are sitting somewhere in the center of the cube and uh, this, this entire cube is the room. 
So at each corner of the room, I have spheres. So that's considered as a simple cube or a primitive unit cell. But what do you mean by centered unit cell? I can have another sphere right in the center of the room, hanging in the center of the room. Then that could be called as a body centered unit cell. So here, if I have, say, a unit cell here, uh, you know, a simple cube and the center of the cube, I'm having a sphere. Now, that's called as a body centered because it's the center of the of the unit cell. So it's called as body centered. Now, what do you mean by face centered? So look at the simple cube on the top. Each cube has six face, two on top and below and four on each sides. Right, so total six faces a cube has got. Now, the center of each face, if I have a sphere, that kind of a unit cell is called as face centered unit cell. So, here on this particular face, I have a sphere. So, it's called as that one part has a face centered sphere. Similarly, if I'm looking at this particular face here, at the center, I have a sphere. So these, like this, I will have at all six faces, I'm going to have one sphere in the center and that's called as a face centered unit cell. Now, the last type of a centered unit cell is end centered. I'm going to consider any two ends of a cube, either top and below, front and back or right and left. So if I consider any two ends of a cube, the center of those two ends will have a sphere. So here in this diagram, I'm considering top and bottom. So here, if you see the top of the U of that particular unit cell in the center, there is a sphere. At the bottom, right in the center of that particular face, there is a sphere. So here, this is called as end centered, which means at two ends of a cube, the center of the sphere has a sphere center of that face has a sphere. So this way we have one primitive unit cell and three centered unit cell which is body centered or BCC, face centered or FCC and end centered unit cell. Next one we will move into parameters of unit cell. So when I look at a particular cube with all spheres at each corners, I'm going to denote the edge length or the distance between the two spheres as A, B, C. So here I have here, this is going to be named as A, this can be given as B and this can be given as C. So basically your edge lengths are, are being denoted as small alphabets. Now, each of these have bond length. Between A and B, I have a bond, I have a particular bond angle. And between A and C, I have another bond angle. And between B and C, I have another bond angle. Now, how am I going to denote these bond angles is just by putting alpha, beta, and gamma. So, in a unit cell, across, I think, all textbooks, when you, took, when you take, it could be your reference textbook, it could be your NCRT, whichever. When you take these books, the edge lengths are denoted as A, B, C and the bond angles are denoted as alpha, beta, gamma. Now that we know what these parameters are for, let's take the examples of seven types of primitive cells and see what are the differences in the bond angle and what are the differences in their edge lengths. So let's see that way we're going to have seven different primitive unit cells in crystal lattice. So let's say one by one. In this case, we're going to start with the simple cube. Now, when we look at the simple cube, its edge length and bond angles are all the same. So here we can write A is equal to B, which is equal to C, which means all the edge lengths are the same. Below that, I've written alpha is equal to beta, which is equal to gamma, which means to say that all the bond angles are equal. But what is the bond angle? The bond angle is equal to 90 degree. Next one is in a tetragonal. So for a tetragonal, if you see, A is equal to B, which means A here is equal to B. The bond angles are the same. But the one that's present perpendicular to A and B, which is the C, is not equal. Because if you can clearly see the picture here, this length of C is longer. 
So A is equal to B but is not equal to C. But in this case, if you see, all their bond angles are equal. And if you take this bond angle, which is alpha, if you take this bond angle, which is beta, if you take this bond angle, which is gamma, all their bond angles are going to be equal. But what are they equal to? 90 degree. Now, the next one is orthorhombic. Now, in orthorhombic, if you see, edge length of A is smaller, B is slightly bigger, and C is even more bigger. So, in this case, A is not equal to B, which is not equal to C. But if you see all their bond angles, they are all at 90 degrees. So, all bond angles are same. Now, the next one is a rhombohedral. Now, in rhombohedral, here the bond, the edge length of A, B and C all are of the same size. But if you look at the bond angles, Bond angles, though they are all same to each other, they are not equal to 90 degree. It is a different bond angle. But bond angle of alpha, beta and gamma, they have the same value, but they are not 90 degree. Now, the next one is monoclinic. Now, in monoclinic, here if you see, A is not equal to B, which is also not equal to C, because the bond angle of A, the edge length of A, the edge length of B and the edge length of C, they are all different. So here, all their edge lengths are different. But the alpha and gamma is equal to 90 degree. But beta alone is not equal to 90 degree. If you can see, the entire diagram is a little tilted. This particular angle is beta and it is not equal to 90 degree. But the remaining two, gamma is here and alpha is here that is equal to 90 degree then the next one is triclinic in which nothing is same now not a single edge length the same or not even their bond angles are same they are not even equal to 90 degree so none of these are tallying with each other in a triclinic primitive unit cell the last one is a hexagonal primitive unit cell in this case if you see a is equal to B. These, these are equal to each other, but the C is slightly longer. So, A is equal to B, but not equal to C. Now, if you're looking at the bond angle, the alpha is equal to 90 degree. Beta is also equal to 90 degree, but gamma, if you see, it is 120 degree. If you see, the angle is slightly longer. It's a slightly bigger angle. So, in this case, alpha and beta is equal to 90 degree, but gamma is not equal to 90, it is equal to 120 degrees. Now, the next one is, we are going to find out that when you take a particular unit cell, how many atoms actually belong to that unit cell. So, before that, I will just show you a particular crystal in which I'm going to talk about what you mean by this number of atoms in a unit cell. So here I've got one cube which is going on repeating to form an entire crystal. But if you look at say for example I'm taking this particular sphere. This particular sphere in the center the one that is being marked on the screen. If I'm taking that particular one if you see that sphere is being shared among so many cubes. Right? So, this particular sphere is shared with this pink cube, the one behind the pink cube, the one below the pink cube and the one the other side of the pink cube and the opposite side cubes. So, if you see, a sphere is not actually belonging completely to a unit cell. It is being shared among so many unit cells. So, that way when you are talking about how many spheres actually belong to one unit cell, we need to find out by a certain calculation. Alright, so this particular number is nothing but coordination number. Coordination number is defined as number of particles immediately adjacent to each particle in a crystal lattice. So this particular sphere is in coordination with this sphere, with the next sphere, with the one above and one below. So in this case, this particular center sphere is in contact with four other spheres and here also this sphere and this sphere. 
2 on the other sides. So totally if the sphere over here is in having a coordination number of 6. So this way we are going to calculate number of atoms per unit cell in different types of unit cells. So let's start one by one. So we'll start with a very simple one which is a primitive unit cell with a simple cube. So here I'm having the simple cube. Now I need to find out that when I have this simple cube, you know, bonded with other cubes, I need to know this particular sphere is actually belonging to one, to it when it belongs to one particular cube, what is its contribution, right? So here, number of atoms per unit cell is equal to 8 at the corner. So, I'm taking one particular primitive unit cell. How many spheres are there or how many atoms are there? 8. But what is its contribution to others? If I'm taking the same sphere which is over here, the pink one, and if I'm considering this as to be one of the sphere for which I'm going to find out the contribution, it is going to this pink sphere. It is shared with the, uh, with the one behind. It is shared with the one below. It is shared with the one front of it. So this way 4 on one side and 4 behind it. So totally 8 unit cells it, this particular sphere is being shared with. So that's why I'm writing 1 by 8. That is the contribution. Now when I simplify this actually for a primitive unit cell only one atom belongs to itself. The others all are shared. All right. Now, the same thing when we look in at the next one, which is the body-centered unit cell. So, for a body-centered unit cell, this is the diagram where I have eight spheres around in the unit cell and one sphere in the center. So, for this, when I see the eight spheres that are there around is still the same as the primitive unit cell. I have eight at the corners and then I consider this to be in an entire lattice. What will happen? Each of this will be divided among 8 other cubes. So, 1 by 8 as contribution. When I try to solve this, I will get 1 atom. What about this 1 in the center? If you see, I have one body-centered sphere and it is not actually being shared with any other cube. So, it's just 1. So, when I try to simplify this, I will get 1 atom here. And when I try to add up, I will have 2 atoms which is belonging to a BCC. This is not an addition sign. This is a multiplication sign here. Please uh, just correct it when you all are looking into the video. It's a mistake. This is a multiplication sign. So here for a BCC, there are two atoms that are belong to itself. Now when I look at number of atoms in a face-centered cubic unit cell, this is the structure for an FCC. Now, when we try to repeat the same thing in the same in the entire structure, the first part of the calculation is constant for all types of unit cell. 8 at the corners and 1 by 8 as contribution. Therefore, one atom will belong to itself. But since we have 6 spheres at the center of each face around the entire cube, we have 6 face centers. Now, out of that, so, say this particular face is attached to the next cube here. So, that sphere that is there in the center is being shared among two, two cubes. Therefore, I am writing one sphere shared by two cubes here. So, this at this particular face at the center, if I am having a sphere, that particular sphere is shared with the pink cube and the one that is there next to it. That is why it is 1 by 2 as contribution. When I try to solve this, it will be three atoms. So, total four atoms belongs to FCC, one unit cell of FCC. So, this way we will calculate number of atoms per unit cell for a primitive cube, for a body-centered cube and for a face-centered cube. For a primitive cube, it is only one atom. For a body-centered cube, it is two atoms and for a face-centered cube, it is three atoms. So that is with the with the entire um, video where we're talking about the basic definitions of a crystal lattice in a unit cell. We looked into the seven types of primitive cells in a crystal, and then we saw that when we have these unit cells, how many atoms actually belong to a particular unit cell. 
So in the next video, we will be doing some calculations on how to find the formula of a compound by keeping these basic uh, information in mind. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much.